In this lesson we will talk about various ways to color our clones and assign them materials. So we have pretty much the same setup. So if you press play, the clones will revolve around the spline just as uh, in previous lesson. Now the only difference between this scene and scene we used in the previous uh, lesson is that I got rid of the animation on these guys and deleted the plane effect. Now, since we are going to talk about how to color your clones and uh, assign them various shaders or textures, first we have to load an effector for that and I believe the most appropriate one for this task is this uh, random effector. The result of this is uh, if you take a look here under this parameter tab is that uh, this guy really randomly offsets uh, clones according to these values here. And you can see that it really shares common settings with the plane effector also. So it has this position, scale, rotation uh, checkboxes so you can affect those parameters. It has this transform mode, transform space. It also has this falloff functionality, which is completely the same, but uh, but there are some things that are a bit different for each and every effector. So everything that is effector specific is uh, pretty much uh, found here under this effector tab. Let's first uh, change some settings here. So let's zero these two guys out and use the same values we used in the previous lesson. So we really build upon that knowledge and don't necessarily confuse the situation. And I will really give my best to keep some things really consistent. So using the same value will, in my personal opinion, help you to understand MoGraph uh, a little bit easier. So let me show you some additional settings you have here. So all effectors have minimum and maximum values. So for example, let's use this minimum value to cut off the negative direction for the clone. So they won't go into negative direction according to this parameter. So they will move only 100 centimeters in this direction, as we explained uh, in the earlier lessons. So this is actually their x direction based on this transform mode and the transform space and I believe that is uh, pretty clear by now and uh, as the name suggests a random effector has everything to do with randomness in your clone so here under the effector tab you will see a random mode so you can actually pick various modes of randomness so for example if I select this Gaussian mode I will have uh, slightly different results. Of course, if uh, you will play with this randomness value, you'll simply create a different random result every time you change this guy here. So let's maybe undo this. You'll also notice that uh, aside to quite a few options here, you have this synchronized and indexed checkboxes. So let's, uh, without being too technical, try to explain this. So synchronized means that uh, same random values will be used for each and every of this guy. If unchecked like this, it will use different random value for each of these transformation. Hope that uh, makes sense. This indexed guy, if left unchecked, can really lead to a diagonal movement and by this I mean that random value can give uh, exactly the same number or value to each of these guys. So if you have uh, for example 100 here and 100 on Z, this guy if left unchecked can actually produce a diagonal movement. So it uh, basically use the same value on two axes and therefore produce the movement in diagonal manner. Hope that uh, is clear enough. Now after this Gaussian type I will skip this noise and turbulence and uh, will explain them just in a minute or two and you will see that uh, I really have a good reason for it. This sorted guy is um, 
I'll imagine that you have, uh, let's say, quite a few objects under your cloner. So let's say you have a bunch of numbers here. And if you want to ensure that uh, each of these guys that is subordinated under the cloner will appear only once, then you will want to use this sorted mode. Now I have to stress out here that uh, some things that I say are not 100% uh, technically correct, but I'm really sure that uh, you will gain a better understanding this way. So I'm really searching for the most simplest explanation for you. Now let's get back to these two guys and uh, we will begin by explaining ones that don't have this temporal component, so they don't work with the time and uh, let's press play and clarify that. You can see that the only parameter that is driving them here is this position x and uh, the effector now simply choose the random value and they stay like that. Same goes for this Gaussian type and uh, these guys here will give you a slightly different result so there is no really need to understand it deeply but uh, you can simply try it out and see what the results you get. Now this guy here is the first one which works with time so let's enable it and uh, see what happens. And you can see the clones are actually dancing so what is happening here? This noise guy actually works now in within this parameter so it will add noise pattern to this position x since this noise guy works with time so how about this this is uh, really interesting you can get different results with uh, checking these guys also this turbulence guy works with the temporal component inside Sina 4D so you can see that these guys are now behaving like this in within this parameter so I can really show you that so now we have a completely different parameter for them to work within so that is really nice let's get back this to 100 and uh, you can see that both turbulence and noise guys have uh, additional options to them here and uh, really this animation speed is uh, really simple to understand so by setting this to let's say 10 you'll really slow down the speed of that uh, noise happening. For this scale, this is actually the scale of the noise used. I don't really know how to explain this. Imagine this like a scaling option for the noises inside the shader. So it is a global scaling setting for a noise used for this random mode. Now you will also notice that this noise and turbulence guys don't have this seed value so they're using a built-in noise or the turbulence. I really hope that makes sense. So for example now you can see that they're really working inside this value so they're going only 100 centimeters or they're actually working inside the limit of that 100 centimeters you can uh, drag this minimum down now they will work in both directions let's actually put this to zero i think it is uh, a bit less confusing stop this and uh, we will now actually talk about this uh, color mode and uh, just to keep things cleaner i will disable the position and i will only use color Okay, so let's enable color, set on, and uh, if you were expecting something uh, spectacular to happen, well, it simply won't until you get rid of this material, because currently this guy is completely overriding this color mode. So let's actually get rid of this guy, and uh, now you see that you've got a random color set on your clones. Let's get back to this uh, random mode and go with the first random mode which is actually named random so this is a completely different color set now and each and every of these guys 
For example, this Gaussian will give you different results. Of course, if you change the seed, you will get different results. If you enable synchronized or indexed, you will get different results. So there is a lot of power in it. And every single of this guy has its a different set of random values. Now, here under parameter tab, we just drag this and uh, maybe pull this a little bit upward so you can actually see the effector and parameter settings both, which will help me explain things. So I can even fold this other which is really a bit distracting. Now, let's use this first random node to explain this. Currently, all the clones are using the default blending mode. So, under this menu, we have uh, options that are really similar to material blending modes. And in fact, they are very, very similar. So, if you want to add, those guys will become a little bit more brighter so definitely there is something uh, also affecting them because every time we select a different blending mode we get a different result so what else is affecting the color of the clothes so let's uh, set this back to default and the answer to that is really simple they are reacting to the color set here inside the cloner object inside this transform tab and uh, currently you can see this wireframe since my cloner is selected and I will just lock this so I can click off the cloner and uh, the wireframe will disappear but I won't lose this setting so these guys are blending with this color set here so let's for example try uh, maybe a hundred percent white and uh, watch what happens nothing let's try maybe completely black value and nothing happens so let's undo that and uh, this can lead people to believe that this guy has nothing to do with uh, coloring the clones in constellations with various effectors but in fact it does the only reason why it doesn't in this scene is because this blending mode is set to default so just like in the material if uh, this is a default you could really say that this is a normal mode, so only effector will affect the color. If you change this to, let's say, add, now it will add from another source. Same goes for these other guys. It can add, subtract, multiply or divide from another source. And uh, as you said, that source is this uh, color under transform tab of the cloner. I'll once again just uh, lock this guy and click off so we lose the wireframe and now if I change this to let's say completely white you'll see that uh, the clones are white. If I change this completely to a black color then the complete coloring of the clones will be once again back to the random effector. So if I choose an arbitrary color here so let's try maybe let's try maybe this blue one you will see that now this blue is uh, mixed with the color, I have to uncheck this, with the colors that are set by this random mode. Of course, you can uh, experiment with other modes, so we will, in this case, subtract our color, we can multiply or we can divide, and uh, really each of these guys will give you different results. Now let's get back to our cloners transform tab and uh, change this to 50% of uh, gray, which is a default value. And that, that will really give you a good starting point. So you can really see the mixing together and uh, it's a somewhat neutral point for the beginning of your setups. Okay, so I strongly recommend leaving this as it is because you can pretty much forget this setting and uh, lose a lot of nerves finding what is wrong with your scene. So let's get back to this random effector and I want to show you that uh, these two modes, this noise and turbulence, actually work also with the color mode. Okay, so if you press play now, actually in this case we want the default mode. So the only value that these clones will receive in regard to color is from this guy set here 
Okay, so this is really neat. So for example, this synchronize will give you different results. This index, once again, different results. Also, this turbulence will give you different results. Let's go back. Mixing also works in this case. So if you set your cloner, once again, let's pick maybe this color and set our random effector blending mode to, let's say, add, you will see that now it is mixing those two colors and it's mixing them in time. So you can create really spectacular effects by this. Let's stop this, go back. Of course, I understand this can be a little bit uh, too much of information at one time. So that is uh, why I'm trying really to work with this uh, color mode. So let's try to simplify. We gave the color value to our clones based on this random mode set here. So if I select something different, I will get different results. We can of course choose if we will use only the colors from this guy or we will actually blend them with something else and uh, that something else was this uh, cloner color let's maybe set this to blue and uh, once again only in the blending mode other than default you can see the results so something like this I hope that this makes sense. This use alpha strength is useful when you are using a real materials on your clones. Now let's actually in the cloner set this value back to 50% of gray. So you have a neutral starting point. So you're just basically increasing or decreasing brightness on your clones. Now, what if you want to use a real material because uh, if I drop this material onto cloner it will completely override the settings here so none of these blending modes will work and uh, even setting this color here will do absolutely nothing so how can we use real materials on our clone constellations the answer to that is really simple currently MoGraph is uh, not really understanding that this is a MoGraph material and you create a MoGraph material by simply loading a MoGraph color shader into the slot and you will immediately see the change. So now, once this guy is loaded into color channel, so it has to be in the color channel, now MoGraph understands that this is a material we want to have fun with and uh, will really enable all those options for us. So, for example, if we set this uh, to play, you can see in the random effector, these guys actually now work. You can add, subtract, you can do anything with your clones. So, let's say we want that original blue color we had to appear on the clones. We would simply change this to multiply. So, this is why I was... Uh, saying at the beginning of this training that it's really important to understand the material system and the shader creation and stuff like that. So I really strongly urge you, if you haven't, that you watch volume 1, 2 and 3. And the reason for recommending volume 3 is uh, to get a decent grasp of Expresso because you will have to know all that to use MoGraph uh, effectively on the highest level. Now, after we set this, every single other channel will work as expected. So, if you, for example, enable luminance channel and uh, load some colors, you will see that it works as expected. So, nothing is changed, just the color shader here, and now it understands that it is a MoGraph material. I will hold this a little bit upwards, maybe even like this, because... Uh, Maybe scale it so we have a little bit more of a real estate here. And uh, this color shader, let's actually put it to a normal mode. This color shader has two modes. First one is based on a color and the second one is index ratio. So 
what that exactly means. This means that uh, you can effectively map a gradient black to white transition to your shader. So this spline, if I invert it, will have a completely opposite result. If I maybe put this to roughly half, my clones will all be gray. So this is a great way to assign grayscale value to clones. And uh, you can even have fun here and maybe load a sine wave spline and uh, you will see a different result. And uh, this is really useful, for example, if you want your clones to fade away and uh, use them in the alpha channel or something like that. So multiple applications of this guy. Let's go back to color mode because I want to show you something else. And that else is uh, that you can actually color the color shader. And I think we are better off without this uh, window and uh, we will play with our material here and uh, I will frame this all. I will also here under random effector enable this default mode. So the random effector is now controlling the coloring of the clone. So the blending mode is default. So if we change now something here in our material, things will change. That is uh, a bit uh, opposite to what we had in a situation where material is not applied to a cloner, but uh, that is uh, what it is. So just to prove you that, I'll enable this multiply mode and uh, you will see that it really takes over the situation. And uh, most of the time that is the case. When you have something on the cloner, a material, delete has a priority over other types of coloring clones. Now, what I wanted to show you is a way to color the clones through the color shader without any effector. So let's actually get rid of this random effector. So all we have now is this color shader. So let's select colorizer here and the colorizer will become a parent of our color shader here. So if you select uh, maybe an index ratio mode, now we have this sine wave spline that is left. You can basically see that now all the colors that are inside this gradient are mapped on the clones according to this spline. So let me show you that. You can now select any color here. So maybe we'll load something that is a little bit more fun. And uh, you can basically have a lot of fun playing with the colors of those clones. So lots of creative freedom here. And this is certainly not the end of the line as far as the coloring uh, your clones and uh, really shading and texturing your clones. And this is in fact just the beginning. I will get rid of this material completely and uh, We'll show you another way to shade and texture your clones and uh, this time I will use an effector that is specifically built for that purpose and it's a little bit uh, complex. It's, uh, it has a lot of options so let's first load it here and this is this uh, shader effector. This shader effector has really two basic functions. First one is that uh, it uses grayscale values to transform clones. Other one, which is uh, much more interesting to us right now, is the uh, option to color clones and use virtually any material on the clones. Okay? So if you want to have full control and uh, really have uh, a lot of power and flexibility on how to texture or shade your clones, Pretty much the shader effector is the way to go. So currently you can see we have no material applied and it uses a default gray value. It actually is set to scale these clones by 0.5 centimeters and it really does so. So if we disable this, we will get a default value for our clone. So this guy can also be used as a simple effector like a plane effector. You can see that uh, really 
utilize uh, these uh, position values and simply offset the clones. Now I will set zero here and uh, you'll notice that as opposed to other effectors, this guy comes with the color mode on by default. Now I understand that uh, this kind of things can be a little bit too technical and maybe all this is boring but really try to follow and uh, understand all these concepts and later in the lessons when we will have some mini projects I will show you fantastic things you can do with effectors and generators in Mograph. So let's actually try to be as clear as we can and uh, I will choose the most simplest explanation for this guy I could find and uh, let's uncheck this use alpha or strength will be a little bit easier to explain things. So if you want to color now this bunch of clones, you will create, uh, of course, a material. And in this case, it doesn't have to have color shader loaded. It can be any shader you want, but be careful. Let me show you something. If I select this red color here, drop it to my shader effector, and uh, really inside the shading tab, choose which channel of the material that is applied to it will be transferred to clones. And in this case, this is the color channel, nothing will happen. You even have the option to drop the texture tag from another object, but I really strongly recommend that uh, you use the material that will be used for the shader effector to be placed on the same shader effector. I hope this makes sense. Now, basically, we are saying our shader effector use this texture tag, use the color channel of this guy, of this material, and transfer that to the clones. But nothing happens. And the reason for it is uh, that even though the color is set here, this guy works only with this channel inside the material. So it doesn't take into account this color unless there is some mixing mode. It takes into account this channel here. So let's load the color here. And we will select the same color, okay, this red one. And you can see now it really shaded the clones according to this channel. So this channel corresponds to this guy here, not this color here. I hope this is clear enough because it can be a major source of frustration. And uh, that is the simple way. So you can basically pick just one channel. If you hit this edit guy, it will open that uh, channel for editing. Second and uh, far more powerful option to color this clones through this shader effector is to use this custom shader and now you can actually load every single shader inside Cinema 4D and use it to color your clones through the shader effector or to use the grayscale values for transformation. So let's actually use maybe gradient. You see the result immediately in the viewport and uh, let's maybe add uh, this color here and uh, maybe this red one here. So now I have all the freedom to texture my clones through this shader effector and uh, pretty much anything that pops to your mind will work. So you can use any type of this uh, gradient and uh, it will work and this opens a lot of power. Now what is worth noticing here is uh, if you enable position here and uh, let's enter 100 here, you will see something is uh, happening here. These guys, the red guys, went upwards and progressively through the gradient, the ones that are the most dark stayed on the zero position. So what exactly is happening here? Currently this shader effector uses gray scale values from within this color, so it really transforms these color values into black and white values. So the red has uh, a lot of white in it, so it's seen as a 
more bright color and more bright means it receives more of this uh, position value. Let me just demonstrate that if I go here to my material and uh, maybe select this blue color and simply increase the lightness, you will see these clones that receive this color will actually rise upwards. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So you can even set this to white and if it is white, then it receives the 100% value set here under parameter. I know this shader effector it can be a little bit complicated and the concept behind it can be a little bit uh, difficult to grasp, but trust me, once you absorb it, the possibilities are almost endless. Here under shading tab, I think it is uh, worth mentioning, you can use these modes here to simply choose uh, a different way of how these parameters will be applied to your clone constellation. So I really don't want to bug you with uh, technical terms. So if you select uh, maybe this gray one, you will see different results and uh, maybe green will give you different results. If you invert this, you will get different results. So white or bright will be zero in this case and what is uh, black or most dark will be 100. So I really hope uh, this makes sense. This shader effector is absolutely mind-blowingly powerful as I will show you in later lessons. Of course, we have a follow-up tab, so pretty much uh, let's select uh, maybe a box follow-up. You can limit the effect just to this box, to, so to the shape of the follow-up, and uh, that's absolutely great. It opens a world of possibilities. You can also combine a MoGraph color shader, load it into material and drop it on the cloner, so you can have pretty much spectacular effects. Let me delete this and uh, this is not the end of the line as far as the shading and texturing the clones goes. Let me show you another way for it. So maybe we can even clear this material and uh, we have one more specific MoGraph design shader in Cina 4D which is this MoGraph multi shader. So let me take a moment to explain this guy, which is really, really great. Let me get rid of this guy and uh, use this window here. We'll have uh, a lot more space. So let's enter the multi shader. And this multi shader will let me load any shader, texture, image, or anything that pops to mind as a texture to be used to texture my clothes. I can add infinite number of uh, textures to be used. So there is actually one neat option here, which is add from folder. So you can add, uh, let's say a thousand images from your folder on your machine. So that is really handy. And in fact, in the later lessons, I will show you something similar, which is really nice. Now let me load a few shaders here. So let's maybe try uh, this galaxy shader and uh, in case if you haven't noticed, I really like this blue color. I think it is uh, really nice. Also, you can load uh, maybe a tile shader. You won't see that because the, the screen is uh, cut off due to recording. And uh, let's use some interesting colors here. So maybe something like uh, this. So it's uh, much more, uh, much more vivid and nice. Maybe this could work. I can even use a red one for this. Uh, lines in between and uh, for the last one we will have to hit this add button and uh, maybe we will load uh, let's say a gradient here and uh, let's select some nice colors so maybe 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 we will go with something green like this just to have uh, a lots of colors and different materials here let's add that material to our cloner and uh, you will notice that uh, the clones received this value so don't think even though if i hit up here if i hit this little guy here 
the guys will receive this green and black gradient but that doesn't mean necessarily that this middle guy is used always in fact what determines which guy is used is this mode so firstly this mode and uh, in this color brightness mode here under cloner transform tab as we have seen before the grayscale value of the cloner color is selecting the material so you can see that if this guy is uh, black then the first guy is selected so all the clones receive this one so on the other hand if this would be white then all these guys would be this material here so that is a really important concept for you to understand and uh, i'll set this to 50 percent and we'll show you another mode for this guy okay so really the most interesting options here are color brightness and this index ratio we will cover some of this later in the later lesson so index ratio now you can even deselect our cloner and uh, now you will see that these shaders are distributed equally on our clones if you would want to do a little bit more elaborate setup you would select color brightness so we're back in this mode where it actually chooses based on their color brightness but what if I load a effector here so let's say a shader effector you will see things changing I will turn off this scale and this use alpha and the strength so as said earlier this guy this color brightness mode uses grayscale values to map these shaders to clones i really hope this makes sense and i know it is a bit complicated but uh, give the effort to follow and try to absorb so now if i will load a shader here so let's load a most simplest shader for this purpose is a gradient shader so now according gradient applied through this shader effector on our clone constellation the multi shader will read out the black and white values and will accordingly select which material of these guys will be assigned to which clone i really know this sounds really complicated but uh, the, the concept is really simple so let's try to clarify if i invert this shader i will get exactly the opposite result so if i right click here and do a invert nodes this is what will happen let's actually pull this guy all the way here and you will see i'm receiving more of these green guys because uh, the white value inside the gradient shader in the shader effector will tell this guy so here the first let's say the first one is mapped on the black value and uh, this last one is mapped to a white value so you can have a number of clones let's uh, once more prove that so if i move this guy here i'll receive more of this uh, galaxy shader guys i hope that this makes sense and i didn't over complicate things now you have seen that uh, there are so many ways to texture and uh, shade your clones and give them color values and uh, there are actually more options which you will see in later lessons but uh, this is pretty much it now in the next lesson i'll show you how you can uh, deform your objects with effectors after that lesson we will explore these other generators so give yourself time mograph is huge powerful complex and uh, to really get a decent grasp it will certainly take some time okay so that's it as far as uh, texturing the clones and uh, let's go to our next lesson